who is wise and understanding among you. Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambitions in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come from down from heaven, but is certainly and spiritual of the devil. From where you have envy and selfish selfish ambition there you find disorder and every evil practice but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure then peace loving considerate submissive full of mercy and good fruit impartial and sincere peacemakers who sow in peace there's a harvest of righteousness. James 3.13 Wow. Good words from the book of knowledge. Let's give thanks to God Almighty. Dear Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the goodness of life. Thank you for this person that has clicked this video. Thank you for you have forgiven us all our sins. Be with us till the end. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and believe in. Amen. Wonderful soul. I am Y311H. My friend is Kasungumo. This one is his wife. And we are always on a mission here. If you don't know what the mission is, there is that episode. My friend, which episode was that one? The one... Uh, which was extra lit. Episode uh, seven, 750. Ah, episode 750. There, we have said everything about what we do. Let's dive in so that you can see today's videos. Ha! Oh, good vibes, my friend, videos. And this is the beginning. Look at this. What's going on here? Huh? What's happening? Oh, this is a natural phenomenon in Africa. Look at this. Natural phenomenon in Africa. People pour water on the ground and uh, look at this. There are hosts there that are just doing an incredible crazy stuff. You see, water enters in this hole, comes out from the other hole, and you can't explain what's going on on the ground. English people, do you have no science words for this? Or how do you explain it? Please tell us. There, do you have a place you can test with uh, this, you can do such type of experiments? See, from videos here, you already see there, there is tarmac on the road, there is uh, good roads. Is there a place with soil you can test uh, or see such type of uh, phenomena? Because this one looks pretty normal here, you see? And these good vibes, guys, they have decided to show it the whole world. It's good vibes till the end, you see? Caught on camera in Aparasia is this creature. Wow, oh, wow, wow. Imagine this creature, my friend, coming across it in the woods and you are just cheating. Oh my god. Oh, look at this kid. Is this, is he there where that creature is or uh, it's another place? Oh my god. Wait, is he there where the creature is? My friend, wow. Oh my god. This is very abnormal oh my god i pity the kid and the person also recording this because oh this is strange extremely look at that creature back there it is walking in some weird type of way oh what could that be maybe the root people from uh, episode uh, that previous episode that we had just watched you see there were some guys called the root people and now you see this creature here in the forest it's crazy Oh, and on other more unbelievable stuff. This, this. Hmm. Good vibes, guys. I'm seeing uh, using Google and then it comes across. Uh, what are you seeing here? A road or what? No. Yeah, a road and on the road. Maybe it's where we shall see the mysterious stuff. Road, are we searching for? 
Let's take a closer look. Wow, that big giant animal there. My friends, are you seeing this? And uh, another one, big giant mushroom that uh, looks like a laser is being pointed to them from another stuff in the sky. Hi, what is this thing? Is this real or is this giant stuff? And, uh, no, my friend. Come and tell me, does this look like... Uh, Camera or uh, computer stuff is crazy. Wow. Oh my god. And on even more mysterious strange stuff in the woods is this creature. Oh, which looks like uh, it has uh, hey, the head uh, combined with the shoulders. Hey, oh my god. There is uh, some episode also. About 10 episodes ago we saw a creature like this one. If you can remember the name please tell us in the comment section. But now this one looks extremely real and uh, now in real life it does not look like those drawings. This is crazy. Oh my god, unbelievable. Oh. And a big bat. Is this now a real life Batman or... What's up? English people. Which animal is this? Or is an overgrown bat? No, the bats uh, don't think they... Eh? Oh my god. This one is a what? My friend, what does this look like? Batman. A Batman. Yeah, myself, I'm thinking this is real life Batman. The most secret UFO footage on the internet. Luckily, we have it here. Look at these huge interdimensional machines caught on camera. Interdimensional machines. Oh, what, what makes them interdimensional? What can they do? Uh, they look uh, normal there, but good people of us. My friend, what? Make them interdimensional. They can disappear or uh, what's up? They can come off it. This is uh, unbelievable. That one looks pretty big. Oh my god. Huh. Hmm. The people from that town must have uh, seen a lot on that day. They didn't believe their eyes probably. They thought they were losing their mind. Maybe the whole town. Or what could you have thought wonderful at least? Give your comments. Because this stuff we see here. On the clouds in the sky, they are just mysterious and some of them are hard to explain. Actually, for me, none of them has been very easy to explain. Drink water from the explain. spring where horses drink. The horse will never drink bad water. Lay your bed where the cat sleeps. Eat the fruit that has been touched by a worm. Boldly pick the mushroom on which the insects sit. Plant the tree where the mole digs. Build your house where the snake sits to warm itself. Dig your fountain where the birds hide from the heat. Go to sleep and wake up at the same time with the birds. You will reap all of the day's golden grains. Eat more green. You will have strong legs and a resistant heart, like the beings of the forest. Swim often, and you will feel on earth like the fish in the water. Look at the sky as often as possible, and your thoughts will become light and clear. Be quiet a lot, speak little, and silence will come in your heart, and your spirit will be calm and full of peace. Share this to your story and drop a jewel if you listen this far. This shows you are part of the 0.01% who finish what they start. Don't forget to follow Tall Glass of Jewels for your daily jewels. Enoch wasn't taken by God. He was taken by people. And he wasn't just taken once, he was taken more than once. You're taught in Bible study that he was taken to heaven on a chariot, never to return again. Not according to the book of Enoch where he actually has a conversation with the beings that are gonna take him on this trip to teach him knowledge, which is approved by the head God anew. This teaching is approved and this trip is actually approved. And it, it's given a set day that they're gonna leave on this trip. He's taken up into the heavens multiple times, each providing different experiences and revelations. In other words, different things he's being taught different knowledge that he's been given on different trips, multiple, not even double, but multiple means more than two. In his initial ascension, Enoch describes how he was taken up into the heavens on the clouds and the wind in the sky bore him aloft. Well, that sounds quite a bit like flying in some type of a vessel. The ascension is often seen in his initial introduction into the celestial realms and during this time he visits various places in the heavens and earth including the places where the heavenly bodies stars sun and moon are regulated oh he's in outer space guys 
one of the earliest accounts of a planned alien abduction. <laughs> Visions of the heavens. As Enoch ascends, he is shown the treasures of the stars and the thunder. Among other secretive and sacred places of the heavens, he witnessed the workings of the natural world from a divine perspective. So he's looking at the earth from a top and he describes it as a giant ball. Understanding the operation of the cosmos, the weather patterns and other natural phenomena from above, looking down on the planet. He's seeing the clouds from the other side. See, this isn't a story about some heavenly father, a sky daddy with a magic wand whisking away a good human into heaven. It's a story of advanced beings with advanced technology that's capable of space travel, taking a man from the earth into space and teaching him things. This is why the book of Enoch is not in the Bible. Oh my God. Something massive is here, part two. It's like uh, we missed out on the part one, but uh, luckily this is what was there. Something massive, extremely massive. Look at this, my friends. Oh my God. What could this be now? I mean, in the waters there are animals that are Stop this big. Doing. The mystery of ancient Egypt's pyramids has been solved by a forgotten river. Until this point, we had no idea how the Egyptians were building the pyramids to the height they were or how they were getting the stones there. But now we know that there was a branch of the Nile River and it was flowing alongside the 31 pyramids in the Giza Plateau. The branch is 40 miles long and it runs directly into the Giza Pyramid complex, which is one of the most famous in the whole of Egypt. We suspected that there were waterways nearby, but we had no idea where they were. That is until they used radar in the area and it showed penetrating the ground or the sand that there used to be a river there. This finally explains how the Egyptians were able to move stones, which were weighing up to 80 tons each into the middle of the desert and the river was there between 4700 and 3700 years ago around the time that the pyramids were built this once mighty river was eventually covered in sand and this probably happened around a major drought 4200 years ago but who knows how long they'd have been building pyramids here if it hadn't dried up for more news like this make sure you like and follow and if you have any comments let me know also catch me over on youtube at life in the past lane i'll see you there Ah, top water versus holy water and a microscope. Whoa, my friends. You see, the, maybe let's see why holy water is um, used to cast away demons by other people in different beliefs. You see, this is how tap water looks like. As you can see, there are a lot of organisms there. Some looks like giant snakes, but uh, wow, it's crazy. Look at this ones. They are even moving together. Oh my god. And now, this is how our uh, holy water looks like under a microscope. Let's look. We might come across uh, something great in, um, in, the in the holy water there under a microscope. What do you think? Maybe some light? Who knows? The video is here to tell us. Oh, my God. See, like, there is also other bacteria there. But you this... Have huh? you ever seen holy water yourself? Myself? I've never seen holy water. What is the... Uh, I had no idea that these things were actually witchcraft until I learned from a witch that they are. So do what you want with this information. Number one, knocking on wood or touch wood is a druid practice where they ask the spirits in the trees to protect them or grant them what they want. The happy birthday song where you sing it three times and then blow out a candle and make a wish. Kundalini yoga. Don't argue with me. Argue with the witch. It is a spiritual practice with health benefits, not a health practice with spiritual benefits. The last two, I only stopped doing last year because they didn't really sit right with me. But one is burning incense. I had boxes of vanilla incense and the other one I learned from Lauren London, which was shadow work and i love lauren london so i don't know how to feel about that what's gonna tell them should i all right then albinism is a genetic condition that occurs through all ethnicities in the world and not just to humans also to pretty much every other animal in the animal kingdom and plants in short it is a partial or complete lack of melanin now melanin is the pigment that gives your hair skin and eyes their color but melanin is also needed for the development of your eyes. So that's why people with albinism are visually impaired or legally blind. And that is also why you see my eyes shake. 
it is a common misconception that albinism only occurs to black people. And I kind of understand where this comes from because albinism is more prevalent amongst black people than it is amongst white people. But it occurs to every ethnicity in the world. So to Asians, to Latinos, to white people, to black people, indigenous people, everyone. If both of your parents carry the gene for albinism, there's a 25% chance that their kid will have albinism. In Europe, about 1 in 18,000 people has albinism, but in some regions of Africa, that number is a lot higher, with about 1 in 3,000. But just because it occurs more in one part of the world doesn't mean it doesn't occur in another part of the world. Now, like I said in the beginning, albinism also occurs through animals and plants. It is simply a part of nature. And nature doesn't discriminate. Give it up. Did you know that the only person who was responsible for dropping the nuclear weapons on Nagasaki and Hiroshima was a Freemason? That's next on Hyperlink. On August 6th and August 9th, 1945, the United States was the first and only country ever to detonate nuclear bombs on two cities, the cities of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Freemasonry hates the church. They do everything they can to destroy the church. So what better target than the Burakami Cathedral in Nagasaki, Japan, to be the epicenter of that attack? Yep, Japan had a very faithful Christian population in the city of Nagasaki, right where they dropped the nuclear bomb. It, that was the epicenter of where that bomb went off. It killed roughly 10 to 15,000 Japanese Christians that were living underground because Christianity was made illegal a few years before. Yep, here's a picture of that cathedral after they bombed it. And the person who gave the order to drop those bombs on those cities was worshipful brother Harry S. Truman, 33rd degree Freemason and President of the United States of America. And his famous quote was, the buck stops here. Meaning that as president of the United States, he took full responsibility for the actions that happened on that day. The buck stopped with this guy right here. But wait, there's more. See, Harry Truman only became president at the very end of World War II. Prior to that, this guy was this guy right here, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He gave the order to start developing the nuclear bomb that would end up being used on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Here's a picture of him in his Masonic regalia. You don't find a whole lot of those because he was paralyzed. So he was in a wheelchair. So there's not a whole lot of pictures of him standing up in an apron, but he was also a 33rd degree Freemason. He passed away in the middle of World War II. So the responsibility for dropping the nuclear bomb on those two cities passed to his fellow Masonic brother, Harry Truman. Yeah, that guy right there. Uh, he was also a member of the most elite Freemason group. He was a Shriner. And we all know about Oppenheimer and all of those kind of ex, uh, let's just say, followers of a little guy, you know, with a little mustache over in Germany, how we took all of them to start developing the nuclear weapon. But this guy right here, Enrico Fermi, was kind of the father of all that. Uh, he developed nuclear vision. Oh, and he was a 33rd degree Freemason. And yes, those atomic weapons forced the surrender of Imperial Japan. But at what cost? Their Masonic values let them make the call that sacrificing 350,000 people was a good enough compromise. And the thing that breaks my heart the most is that they did not need to drop both bombs. Every historian has thought that. Basically, the reason why they dropped both bombs, that second bomb on that church was out of curiosity because the bombs were made of two different types of nuclear material and they wanted to see what the effect would be differently. Remember, it's this guy right here, Harry Truman, 33rd degree Freemason, who said the responsibility of it was his and his alone. The buck stops here. But you know what? People might think he was a good Christian man, but he was acting a lot more like that, uh, you know, Islamic terrorist uh, symbol on his hat there, his fez. Um, you know, he was definitely acting with the sword, and that really was showing his true Masonic values. 
So if you're considering Freemasonry or if you're actively in it right now, you're going to hear that you walk on the backs of giants. So remember, you walk on the backs of these mushroom clouds. Freemasonry is not the answer. God loves you, and he wants you to have a better relationship with him. God bless you. In 1980, a Japanese journalist filmed an iPhone, specifically an iPhone 13, and this video is resurfacing on the internet. It is creating an incredible buzz. So in fact, this show was filmed in 1980, and it was around Hiroshima. You know that in Hiroshima there was a bomb in 1945. The entire city was deserted, obviously, because of the radiation. And actually, the show is about them going back to the place to see all the abandoned houses, the objects that were there, etc. And actually, at the time, the guy thinks it's a mirror because theoretically the iPhone did not exist in 1980. And yet they did indeed find an iPhone 13. And that's the most worrying part, that no one can explain how, in 1980, the journalist could have found an iPhone. And the guy is puzzled by the thing because he doesn't know what it is. He really thinks it's a mirror, so... Who can explain this glitch in the matrix, please? I've checked the sources. It's really a video from 1980. You can look it up on the internet. Oh my God, unbelievable. What? Look at this uh, duck here. It decided to just uh, be dramatic. <laughs> These animals are full of wonders. You were actually involved in this, in this cult mm -hmm. in attacking Christians, weren't you? Yes. Um, so... We so I was a channeler. Um, I talked to the demons, and we re they relayed messages to the rest of the cult through me. And their goal was really just to cause chaos. Um, but later on, um, I was sixteen when uh, I'm just gonna say it. Uh, I met Satan himself, mm -hmm. uh, which really obviously shocking um <laughs> and his priority for us it changed the trajectory of the cult and we started attacking just christians going after clergy specifically um we had names addresses workplaces um and that's what we did we just harassed christians mm. so and that's <laughs> going on now isn't it i mean that's oh yeah yeah. There are assignments on uh, people yes. who are actively engaged in uh, in worshiping and ministering, uh, mm -hmm. including now yourself. So we pray, we plead the blood of Jesus yes. Christ over you. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> that the Lord has victory because you realized uh, as this was going on that there were certain Christians or certain people mm -hmm. that would not be at the effect of, of these, uh, these prayer or these chance or these uh right you know, these practices yep. so uh i would actually travel in the spirit astral projection to um influence i don't know lust or something on a christian and uh in the spirit i would see like a dome like a blue dome over uh groups of christians that were praying or <sighs> just through the all those experiences i connected that we could not attack christians as they were actively praying protection from god like there was a no-go zone just no absolutely no power so <laughs> that's i love it now like like yes <laughs> thank you god um but back then, it, it made me very angry. It made the demons very angry. Um, and so at that point, that made me curious. How is this possible? How can Christians have this power to just nullify the demonics completely? So, uh... <laughs> uh it, I, well, it's, it's the Lord's Prayer, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. that will be done and, uh, lead me not unto temptation, but deliver me from evil. Mm -hmm. I mean, that Jesus mm -hmm. gave that prayer and you're, you're testifying that in fact, when we do that, pray the, uh, uh, the enemy, God's enemy, the minions of demons and what have you cannot affect mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 
it's perfect protection. Nothing can get through. So uh, I take very great comfort in that now. <laughs> and um, yes. Satan is defeated. Yeah, He doesn't have any power. It's all an illusion. And uh, I wish more people grasped that. <laughs> yeah. It's actually a flat plane. Mm -hmm. surrounded by an ice wall mm -hmm. with a dome of firmament above indeed that nasa is uh, hoodwinking us absolutely 100 percent. and the media is controlled by people who perhaps do not have our best interests as their number one priority i think that's uh, quite a fair assumption of it. earth is a realm it is not a planet earth would be more easily defined as a system environment earth is also a machine it is a tesla coil the sun and moon are powered wirelessly with the electromagnetic field, or what they used to call the ether. Uh, this field also suspends the celestial spheres with electromagnetic levitation. Electromagnetic levitation disproves gravity because the only force you need to counter is the electromagnetic force, not gravity. The stars are attached to the firmament. Right. Now, you know, people, he's not in history books. There's a good Oh, yes. There's a good reason he's not in history books, you know. History is written by the winners of wars and, and literally the evilness of men, I guess. Hmm. What you see in movies and art books is uh, because it's something that allegedly has ever been seen, you see? Ah, record this stuff. What? What is this stuff? It's not even the predator. It is believed that there was a time people saw this predator. And not hallucinations or anything like that, but it's crazy. Good people of that. Do you think this So check this out, you guys. See? This may be a small form of disclosure, but they have found seven alien mega structures throughout our solar system, y'all. They are calling these things Dyson spheres, and they just popped up in our solar system, you guys. Check this out. A group of researchers say they've identified at least seven stars that might be surrounded by super advanced alien megastructures known as Dyson spheres. Yes, I said alien structures, and I know what you're thinking, but just stay with me here, because the basic idea was this. Superior intelligent life might build big structures around their home stars or planets as a way to harness or reuse that energy. A 1960s physicist who came up with this idea, Freeman Dyson argued that if these structures existed, there'd be so much energy that human scientists on Earth could probably spot it because it would emit a lot of infrared radiation. So in this new study, researchers say they found seven sources glowing in the infrared, those are their words, but couldn't find an obvious explanation for why these sources are glowing so much, which could mean they're Dyson spheres or something else entirely. And what I'm saying is, what? Space is so crazy. I wish I understood it better. So let's talk to a scientist to help wrap our heads around this. I'm joined now by Professor Dana Levin. She is an astrophysicist and author of the book, Black Hole Survival Guide, as well as the Clairto Professor of Physics and Astronomy at Bernard College of Columbia University. Professor, first of all, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I tried to explain it a little bit. That was my nice. very dirty version. I was going to be like, yeah, but I'm an English major who just had Google. <laughs> You uh, have a PhD in physics from MIT, so how do you explain Dyson well, spheres? I think there was an excellent explanation. If you look at where we are relative to the sun, we're very far away. We're the third planet in, and imagine the light that we try to collect, let's say, with solar panels on people's homes or on any roofs to, to collect that energy. Imagine if you got really close and you caught everything the sun was emitting. It's just a tremendous amount of power. And so Freeman Dyson was thinking about this. Actually, he was originally inspired by sci-fi, um, uh, written by Olaf Stapleton like decades earlier. And his idea wasn't so much a solid sphere. It was really like satellites in orbit, a network of things that would be orbiting and would essentially, what we would now say, have solar panels and are collecting that energy. So what do you make of this study? <laughs> Generally speaking, I guess, do you think it's possible that these are are the elusive Dyson sphere? So I think it's very unlikely, but I'm open. We have to be open as scientists. If we think we know the answer before we go and observe, then we're already defeated. Um, I think it's terribly unlikely, but it's extremely exciting and interesting to, to think about. And it's fun to think about. What's, what's probably going to happen is we're going to look at, at this infrared signature that you mentioned, and we're going to find out that there's a natural cause. Mm. Um, so a lot of things emit heat in the infrared. You know, infrared goggles allow us to see... Uh, human bodies and the heat of human bodies and it's not that dissimilar that when we look in the infrared we see things 
emitting heat. So the idea was if we had this very technologically advanced civilization, like thousands of years beyond where we are, right now and they could build such a thing and it was collecting all this energy it would collect also some heat and would have to cool off and we would see that in the infrared but there are other natural possibilities that, are, that could explain what do you think those possibly could well be? There, it could be a very young star that still has some material around it in kind of a disk and that's how planets form planets coalesce out of these early disks and and those can emit in the infrared it could be that there's actually an entire galaxy in the distance behind the star and we're seeing that galaxy and we can't disambiguate those um or it could be planetary collisions i mean there are natural explanations uh, but I think it's worth noting, we're looking just a thousand light years around us. That sounds far, but it's actually really close. That's, that's our backyard. Mm -hmm. The entire Milky Way galaxy is a hundred thousand light years across. And there are probably more planets in the Milky Way galaxy than there are stars. I'm not gonna lie, y'all. It seems that to me they are being cryptic, okay? They are hiding information, okay? There is something in the atmosphere or many things in the atmosphere that they are not telling us about now if you've seen the the netflix series three body problem they told us that they are here and they are watching they said they have came back from our future into the past to save what's going on and then ever since then you see the planets happen you see what's happening to the planet literally you see what's going on with the planet just look at their body language you know let me know what you guys think about this video this video is strictly for entertainment purposes only i'm only raising awareness to interesting situations during these interesting times like comment and share for more videos like this y'all thank you for tuning to my frequency let's get this shift peace in oh my friends uh, what if this was that previous video what do you think about it you see See, I'm always preaching about honesty. Caring for your neighbor, you care for yourself, you see? There will be no need for lying to yourself if you really care for your neighbor that way. Thanks for watching up to this far. I understand you might have clicked for the first time, and uh, which is very, very important, and not take it for granted. You even deserve a round of applause for that. My friend just clap for this person that has clicked today, you see? Uh, feel much welcome here, a place of spreading love. Till next time, bye bye. Good vibes.